Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers, because that's God's plan for us. We saved you a seat right in the front. I want you by faith to just come on in, get your Bible, get something to take notes. And uh, like Jesus said, man doesn't live by every uh, you know, by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Your body needs to be fed food or it'll get weak. You'll lose strength. Well, your spirit has to be fed or it won't have strength. But uh, being nourished up in the words of faith, it's an amazing thing. Faith is of the heart. And uh, uh, the scripture said that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's an indication of a strong heart or inner man. The stronger your spirit gets, what, what seemed unreachable begins to see entirely within reach. What seemed so hard and impossible, you begin to look at it and go, well, God can do that. Sure he can. And it's not a, ma not a matter that issues, you know, like maybe you need some money. It's not that that's so much money. If you're despairing over it, it's because your faith is so small. The stronger your faith gets, the smaller the amount of money looks. The stronger your spirit and faith gets, the, the less significant uh, your physical problems appear to you. And you realize nothing's too hard for God. He can do anything. And all things are possible with God and to those that believe. And I'm a believer. Well, let's pray and release faith for today. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us, the faith school class all over the world, we join in faith together asking you for utterance and anointing, the moving and working of your Holy Spirit and your holy angels. There's no uh, limitation or restriction on distance with you uh, or time. Uh, your word is living. Your spirit ministers everywhere all over the planet simultaneously. We're asking for it. We're believing for it. We're thanking you for it. We're expecting it. We go ahead and give you thanks in advance for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Go with me in the textbook to Hebrews chapter 10, please. All this week and actually the previous two weeks, we've been studying on this subject that we see in Hebrews 11. We're calling by faith, looking at all the great heroes of faith. In Scripture, Hebrews 10 and 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. I won't be pleased with him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition or destruction. It is a choice. And without having to know a bunch of things, you just choose in your heart and say, I am not of those that draw back. I am a believer. I am and I will be. Somebody said out loud, I am a believer. I'm not of those that draw back. I'm a believer to the saving of the soul. Chapter 11 and verse 1 describes what faith is. Verse 2 says, by it, by their faith, the elders obtained a good report. Other translations say, this is what the ancients were commended for, was their faith. Others say, the Amplified says, for by faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. So God is holding up these individuals and specific uh, instances in their life and saying, this pleased me. This is good and acceptable in my eyes. And so uh, what should we do when we see and hear that? We should think, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to do what they did, and, that, and I'm going to please God like they did. In the fourth verse, we've been looking at what happened with Abel. Let's continue to look at it. He said, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice or offering or gift than Cain, 
We see in just a few verses later, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Can't please him unless you did it in faith. You could give an offering of a million dollars. You could give five million dollars to feed hungry people and it would help them. But if you didn't do it in faith, (laughs) it wouldn't please God. Now, this is a a new thought to a lot of people. They think, well, oh, no, no. I mean, the good works please God. It matters what heart you do it with. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about it. It says, you know, if I I give everything I've got to feed people and give up my body to be burned and don't have love, he said, it profits me nothing. It benefits me nothing. Well, This is not a separate issue because the scripture also says faith works by love. You find one, you'll you'll find the other. They they work together. So it's it's all about the heart. But that also, what if I don't have a million dollars? Well, if you got five (laughs) and the Lord directs you to do something with it and you don't do it griping or grudging or because you think you have to, you do it because you love God and you love them and you do it in faith, God's pleased with you. Regardless if it's a quarter (laughs) or 50 cents or a million dollars. I know uh, some years ago I was in some meetings and I was a student in Bible school at the time and uh, there was a a man preaching that I, I was very impressed with. I thought, and I was getting a lot out of what he was preaching and teaching. And that uh, during, one serv- during one service, uh, the Lord dealt with me, give him your $5. That's all I had to my name on that day <laughs> was a five, one $5 bill in my front pocket. That was it. And um, I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> they had already received the offering. So I knew I'm going to have to go up after the service if I'm going to do that. And, and I, didn't, I didn't really want to do that because it just wasn't very big. You know, it's, it wasn't big. And, uh, but, you know, we need to answer the question, big to who? We, we talked about this already, the widow woman's offering. Right. Two mites. That'd be like two pennies or maybe even less today. A penny. Well, that's certainly not much. And yet the Lord Jesus, the Bible said, he was watching the offerings and watching what they put in. Oh, boy. What pastor would get in trouble today? Is that right? When the offering plate was being passed and if I came down and said, let me, let me look at that. What are you putting in? Okay. All right. Let me, oh, man, that'd be talked about. Is that right? And yet Jesus was standing there. How else would he know? that the woman put in two mites. How, how else would he know the other guys put in big amounts? He's watching it. Well, you know, he is the same yesterday, <laughs> today and forever. Is that right? If he ever did something, you no need for you to think he changed. He's still doing it. But he wasn't just looking at amounts. He was looking at heart. And heart is revealed by percentage. They're with me. She gave 100% on that day. And he, I mean, he, he spoke out loud. I guess he interrupted the offering. And he said, uh, uh, th- this woman has outgiven everybody here today. Now, I'm sure there were some wealthy people that were going, I don't think so. I mean, did you, did you see my check? Or did you see but the Lord said, oh, mm-mm. she outgave you big time. Because why? Because if they, maybe they had a lot, maybe they gave 1%. Of what they had, she gave 100%. You can't do any more than that. And so uh, that revealed, though, her heart. Now, a lot of people would be saying, oh, no, no. A widow? Dear, take your pennies. No, no, no. Here, and let me give you some money. No, the Lord let that stay in the offering. Come on, are y'all with me or not? He let it stay in there. Why? Because these pennies are not going to meet her need. But it is enough for a seed. And a seed can be multiplied. How many believe the Lord took care of that woman? Well, you know he did. We have instance after instance of him taking care of widows 
and other people in the scriptures, like we talked about a couple of days ago about that woman that made Elijah, the prophet, a little cake first. Mm -hmm. And did the Lord take care of them? Mm -hmm. They ate for many days while other people were literally starving to death. So by faith, Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice. It wasn't just the cost of it, the amount of it. It was the faith that was involved in it. That's what pleased God. Go back with me to Genesis. Let's look again. Genesis 4. It says, uh, verse 2, Abel was a keeper of sheep. Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord, a present. Abel, he also brought, but it gives description. He brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect to Abel and to his offering. And we know from Hebrews 11, God testified of it in front of Cain and whoever else was there. Maybe Adam and Eve were there too. I don't know. But it was something that was done outwardly. And it said, but to Cain and his offering, he had not respect. We live in a, um, a society that places great emphasis on not upsetting anybody and approving everything and including everything and approving of everything. And this is just not how it should be. This is not how God is. God will tell you when yours is not okay. He'll tell you, uh-uh, uh, this, this is not up to what it needs to be. And I'm not accepting this. And uh, the scripture goes on to say, you know, that Cain uh, was angry and his countenance fell. And um, he, he was really, he got really mad. He got really upset over this. And uh, the scripture said he, that the Lord went on to say, why are you wroth? And why is your countenance fallen? You know, if we would listen today, uh, there'd be times again and again when if you got upset, the Lord would say, why are you upset? <laughs> what you so mad about? How many remember the scripture said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why? Uh, this same passage says, don't give place to the devil. The reason people, what happened to Cain? The reason he became a murderer is he didn't deal with, with his anger and his vexation and frustration on that day, he let it stew. He, he, he fumed over it. And he was dishonest because whose fault is it that his offering didn't get accepted? Yes. Ain't too many people around here that you can blame. Is that, right? Whose fault is it? Hmm? You know what he decided? He decided it was Abel's fault. That, he, that God didn't accept his. Because Abel spent so much money on his offering and gave such a big, big thing that it showed him up and it made him look bad and embarrassed him in front of God and everybody. Why am I saying this? This is how the devil works. He's subtle. He's crafty. And they're... they're Case after case where it should be obvious. You messed up, buddy. <laughs> you did, right? You know better. You knew, you knew not to bring them old wrinkled vegetables in here. <laughs> you, you knew it. You knew it. But no, you didn't have time. You just grabbed what was handy. You came in. No heart, no faith, no love, no honor. What did you expect? God's going to play games with you? Treat you like you know better, and like you didn't know when you do? God knows, right? You're not going to fool him. He's not going to play games with you. What did the Lord say about it, though? He said, he said why are you so mad? Why is your countenance fallen? The, notice this is not the end of it. If you do well, what, what would happen? Shall you not be accepted? What's he telling him? This ain't the end of the world. Right? 
there'll be another offering, right? You can bring one tomorrow if you want to. You can get this right, Cain. Hmm? If you do, I'll accept you. If you do, if you do good, you do right, I'll approve of you just like I approved of your brother's offering. This does not have to be a big thing. You made a mistake. Learn from it. Do better next time. But did Cain do this? Mm -mm. No. Can you see how the devil works? He's mad. He's fuming. Fuming mad. And he just goes home and stews. And stews. And when you don't admit the truth, if you don't want to believe the truth, what else is there for you to believe? Lies. If you don't want the truth, what else is there? And, and if you, because of your pride, because of whatever, you don't want it to be the way it is. You don't want to admit you messed up. You don't want to admit your heart was wrong. If you don't want to admit that and acknowledge the truth, you say, uh-uh, no, 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 that ain't it. The devil will say, well, here, here's something you can believe. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want the truth. He's got plenty of lies for you. Hmm? And it's dangerous. It is dangerous to push away truth when you know it's true. When you know it's right. That's how you become self-deceived. You become self-deluded. There was a time when you knew better. You knew what was right. But you didn't want that to be so. You didn't want to deal with it. You wanted to hide it. You wanted to pretend. So you push the truth away and the devil says, fine, I got some stuff you can believe. <laughs> and here's what he told him. It's that Abel. Abel, he knew. He just trying to show you up. He just tried to make you look bad. He pranced around there with that little fluffy sheep. You see how he just <laughs> flaunted in your, in your face and look, how, look what I got and and, and, and he, he, he disrespected you. He dissed you. He dissed your offering. He did. <laughs> but that's all a lie. Who dissed who? <laughs> Cain disrespected the Lord, didn't he? He, di he disrespected. He should. Cain should have hit his knees. Offering day. Is that right? When the Lord said, Cain, what is this junk? What? <laughs> Well, boy, you know better than this. I'm not, I'm not accepting that. I'm not accepting that offering. What should Cain have done? Forgive me. Father, I know better. I, why'd you do that? Just, I repent. Hmm? I'll, I'll do better, Father. I'll do better. And I mean, this could have been in, in the rear view mirror. Is that right? In a hurry. He could have done well tomorrow or the end of the week whenever they had their offering time again. And uh, next week, it, it could have been the father talking about Cain. Is that right? Cain could have his own verse in Hebrews 11 right now. Is it true or not? He could. Cain could have his own verse. But he believed lies. And he actually, he believed it so, so long and so much until every, he decides everything that's wrong in his life is because of Abel. Abel has ruined his life. Abel has, and he got so mad that when they went out and tried to talk about it, he flew into a rage, he killed him. The first murder on the earth that we know anything about. A man killed his brother, his brother, who had done nothing wrong, right? What had Abel done? Loved God too much. Come on, can you see that? He loved God too much to suit Cain and the devil. And he showed it by giving a big offering. He just gave big because he loved God. He's not trying to compete with his brother. He just wants to show God he loves him. And uh, it's still this way today. The reason we have these things recorded is because the very same things are happening. All through life, all over the world, people are loving God and expressing it in their actions and gifts and work and service. And there are others who are not doing what they know they should, but they won't repent and they blame others. 
That's one reason why you have a lot of spousal trouble and marriage trouble and family trouble and trouble on the job. People blaming other people for things that are self-inflicted. Things that they weren't willing to repent over. Somebody say, not me. Not me. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. If you need to repent, come on, help me out. You? <laughs> let, 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 me, let me show you how to do it. Just You say, Lord, I was wrong. Come on, say it out loud. Just practice for me. Lord, Lord I was wrong, and I repent. No excuses. I'll do better. <laughs> Who are we blaming? We're taking responsibility right here. We're not blaming anybody else. And that's when you'll get genuine grace. Oh, thank God for the grace of God. Grace to come out of that depression and that anger and all that devilish junk and get favor and mercy and grace to help in the time of need. And what was a weakness and a failure in your life can actually become an area you become an example in, right? And you can tell other people when they mess up, you can go, yep, I did that too. I did it. But you don't stop there, right? I repented. And man, the Lord, next thing you knew, within three months, he had me on top of that. Praise God. And I was actually being an example instead of being a failure, an example of faith instead of an example of disobedience. So he said that uh, Abel gave of the firstlings and he gave of the fat. Go with me to Malachi, please. And look, because it talks about the very same thing. Malachi, the first chapter. And we'll start in verse 6. That's at the very end of the Old Testament. Malachi. And it says in verse 6, the Lord said, a son honors his father, a servant his master. Let me, let me just stop here. Can you see faith honors God? Yes. Absolutely. A son honors his father, a servant his master. If I be a father, where's my honor, the Lord said to those people of that generation. He said, if I'm a master, where's my fear? Where's my respect and my reverence? Said the Lord of hosts, O priests that despise my name, priests, preachers <laughs> that despise his name. And they said, well, when did we despise your name? In what did we despise your name? Verse 7, he says, you offer polluted bread on my altar. And you say, where did we pollute you? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? If you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? <laughs> Give it to him, he said. See if he likes it. <laughs> is this about pleasing? Will he be pleased? He Don't expect me to be pleased with it. He wouldn't be pleased with it. Or accept your person, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, he says, you've profaned it. You say the table of the Lord's polluted. Even his food or meat is contemptible. You've said, behold, what a weariness it is. And you've snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts. Can you see this is, this is about a bad attitude, right? This, they're saying, Psh, okay, it's offering time again. I guess I got to do something. I guess we got, and these were the priests that were supposed to be doing the sacrifices for the people and even the country and the nation. And they're saying, okay, it's offering day, it's sacrifice day. Uh, we got to do the sacrifices. Yeah, I know. How many? Well, you know. Well, where's the sacrifices? I don't know. Well, go out there and get them. No, don't get the good ones. Just, just get them. They look like they may not make it through the week anyway. Just, just bring them. <laughs> We're laughing, but that's what they did. Sickly, broken, deficient, deformed. Their, their refuse, things, uh, stock, they might have lost anyway, or that they might have just given anyway. Not fluffy. Can you see this? Not their best. Not their first. Not their good. And the Lord is displeased with this. He said, uh, 
Thus you have brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand? Says the Lord. But cursed be the deceiver, which has in his flock a male and vows. He has a fluffy. And sacrifices to the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Is he a great king? Yes. Should we do the best we know how to do? Is it about the most expensive thing out there? No, it's not. It's about the heart. And the big thing that was disrespectful and displeasing to him is there was zero honor and faith in this. Ah, oh, it's time to go to church again. Oh, I've got to read my Bible. No, you don't have to do anything. I've had people ask me, do we have to tithe? No. You don't have to pray. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do anything. But if you don't want to do anything, what does that show? A lack of love for God. A lack of desire for His things. And the more love and the more desire, the more faith you have in Him and in His goodness, you do big things. Big for you, not to compare with anybody else, but the Lord knows what you can do and what you can't. He knows if it's your last two mites, he's going, good job, that's good, I'm pleased. And it comes back, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Hallelujah. You going to honor the Lord, class? Yeah, we are. Say it out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith. Honoring and giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll see you next time in Faith School. Guys, I really enjoyed being with you again this week. Uh, the Lord's helping us. We're getting such good testimonies from all over the world uh, about uh, what Faith School is meaning in people's lives. I want to thank all our partners that continue to pray and, and sow seed into this. We've been talking about offerings all this week. And it's definitely a demonstration of love that you keep sowing into this ministry like this, and the reward will be great. If you would like to become a partner with these others, you can. The information is at the screen. And don't despise a small seed. It's amazing. A dollar a month might not seem like much, but if a lot of people get together to do it, uh, a little can become much, and we can reach more and more. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers and your faith. Uh, we can feel it and sense it. It bolsters us. It encourages us to go on and to do more. We love you. We pray for you. Uh, till next time, we'll see you in faith school. Glory be to God in the highest.